Why, good morning, church. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome right here at Eastminster Presbyterian Church, where you are loved and you matter. I hear the chicken barbecue was a great success. Yay. Thank you, missions committee. Thank you, everyone who came, contributed in any way, and purchased meals. Our flowers are given to the glory of God by John and Jane Henty in loving memory and gratitude of their parents. We invite you to fill out the friendship pad and pass it down the row. We are so delighted to be celebrating both Stewardship and New Member Sunday this morning. Next Sunday is Preschool Sunday at both services, and here at the 11, There'll be the baptism of Peter and Hillary Roos twin baby girls, Alice and Patricia. Helenita? Treat. Thank you, Helenita. And now we thank our chancel choir for this morning's offering, uh, Elder Barb Blymere. Thank you to our ushers and to our camera operator, Fred Becker. And now how about if we take a moment on this special day to breathe in lots of love and breathe out and spread lots of love. And now let us rejoice as we begin our morning worship. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. We gather for worship today to celebrate our gifts. We are celebrating the gifts we give to this church, the pledges we are making for the upcoming year. We gather for worship today to celebrate our community. We are celebrating the We gather for worship today to celebrate our future. We are celebrating a future full of outreach, a future full of service, a future full of worship, and a future full of growth. We are celebrating a future with hope. We gather for worship today to celebrate our visions. Let us gather in celebration. Let us worship God. Verses 1 and 4.
Bring your bulletin. semicircle here. Good morning. On behalf of the session, I present Kathy Holly, who has been received into the membership of this congregation by transfer from Nielsville Presbyterian in Germantown, Maryland congregation. On behalf of the session, I present Peter and Hillary Ruth, Roger and Georgian Sprague, who have been received into the membership of this congregation by reaffirmation of faith. Hear these words from scripture, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. As members of the body of Christ, let us all stand and reaffirm the faith into which we were baptized. Together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We have professed our faith as one body. At this time, I ask you all, will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and mission through your prayers and gifts your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. I invite the congregation to raise your hand in blessing. Holy God, thank you for calling us to be your people and joining us to Christ's body, the church. We praise you for leading Kathy Pete and Hillary, Roger and Georgian to this congregation. Empower us by your spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do, giving our lives in service to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you made the decision to join this community. It is hoped that you will be comfortable here and a little uncomfortable too, for the gospel confronts us as well as comforts us. We hope you will experience at Eastminster Presbyterian Church a balance of the gospel's peace and the gospel's continuing call for self-examination. Lastly, Remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you always. Welcome to this ministry that we share in Jesus Christ. Welcome. 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 Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Yes, please remain here while we sing the next hymn together.
Let us pass and receive the peace with our neighbors. Teach me. Jesus had been teaching his disciples a number of things, including this very large teaching. Give, and it will be given to you. 
a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So, Jesus is saying, what you put out there is what comes right back to you. And that's good news, especially on a Stewardship Sunday, right? The blessing you give will be the blessing you receive. Listen, I know stewardship sermons aren't easy to hear. They can make you feel guilty. We like our money. We want to live a comfortable life. God wants you to, too. He's just saying, put me first. Give me the first cut, the top of the paycheck or the Social Security check. You can still live the life you want. It may mean going out to eat a little less. It may mean not buying that pair of shoes. You may rethink if you really need that new television. <sighs> because here's the thing about giving. It needs to hurt a little. The word is actually sacrifice. In the Old Testament, we learned that the Israelites sacrificed animals at God's altar. It's not that they didn't esteem animals, quite the contrary. They gave something to God that would truly get them where it hurts, their bellies. They understood and celebrated that their offering had to be a sacrifice, that it had to mean something. When we make our offering to God at the altar every Sunday, is it hurting a little, or do we barely miss it? If we barely miss it, if we barely miss what we're giving, it's not a sacrifice. Many of you have found that when you give more than you think you can, money finds its way back to you. You know, I know you've had this experience. An unexpected check comes in the mail. You get a refund. You go to buy a suit and take it to the counter and find it $200 less than the tag said. Maybe you're out walking the dog and a $20 bill rolls up to your feet. Or your brother-in-law pays you back that $500 from a, from a year ago that you never expected to see. I just found a new handyman for our house, much more honest than the previous one. He told me last week, after he replaced one of our front porch posts, that he often does work for free for widows on a limited income. He understands the principle of today's scripture that what you put out comes back. He quickly followed by telling me, those widows have lots of friends on the same street. <laughs> And this week, I caught a church angel. They were resupplying the water, sodas, and snacks many of us enjoy. They replenish and replenish all the time. They're, 
There are so many snacks and drinks around this whole place, aren't there? And I wondered, who could it be? Well, I caught him this week. And I would like to think blessings come back upon this couple a hundredfold. It's a spiritual principle. If you give according to what you have been given, you will be taken care of. It's like you get in the flow of blessing. What goes out comes in. I love doing this. It feels so good and it's so right. What goes out comes in. God provides. I know it's not easy to trust that. I know it's not. And I have to be honest with you. I felt challenged by this sermon this year. For many years, Ken and I gave 10% between our two churches. We always give his church a little more because that's where our membership is, and we always lived in their parsonage. Right before Abe went to college, we decreased that 10% pledge. We knew that was the right thing to do, and we felt good about it. Well, when we came to Hanover, there was no parsonage, and so for the first time ever, we had to buy a house it took almost two years. We moved into a 33-year-old home at the end of July. We had to spend way more than we thought with a sky-high interest rate. And since we moved in, there have been surprises. <laughs> Homeowners. Every time I turn around, I'm paying somebody for something. The HVAC guy comes for the first time next Monday to check out our three-part heating system. And I've been so worried about it for three months. The thing is, my fear has been here and God below it. What's wrong with that picture? What is wrong with that picture? <laughs> God has always taken care of Ken, Abe, and me. God has always provided. And that makes me want to cry because of how I can be about our finances. My mother had that worry when she didn't need to. I have it now. But I'm grateful that it doesn't appear to have passed on to our 22-year-old son. He loves to spend money. <laughs> so, I didn't know what I was going to pledge today. I knew we'd increase our pledge to our Hanover Church, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. But I've gone back and forth with the amount for Eastminster. But you see, you have to practice what you preach. And I realized I need to give the amount I plan to give and just breathe and trust. Ken and I probably need to get back to 10% at some point. Maybe God is waiting for that in order to more greatly bless us. Meantime, I'm holding on to my 4%. <laughs> but you know this. When we put God first, life really does open up to us in a brand new way. I know that life will always open up for Eastminster as long as the church continues to give some of its offering outside of these doors to give to those on the outside. 
You will always be blessed. You will always have enough as long as you send some out. God will provide. We have all received God's fullness. Grace upon grace upon grace, morning by morning. He feeds us here. He heals us here. He teaches us here. This is the most important place in our life. Right here. Do you doubt me? No. This is the most important place in your life, and if it's not, you should come see me. Because I'll tell you why it's the most important place and what will change for your life when you realize. This is the most important place. This is where it all begins. I do want to say that sometimes there are those in a congregation who have lost their job or who have a very limited income. The church is not asking more of you than you can give. Please know and understand this. The church values you. Whether you ever give a cent to its mission or not, I want to be clear. It wants you. It needs you. You matter. Your worth is much greater than your financial worth. Your worth is so much greater than what you put in the collection plate for us. The practice of financial stewardship is about listening to the still, small voice for how much God says to give. God knows you. God knows your finances. God knows what's coming down the line. If you listen to that voice instead of looking at your checkbook and your savings register, you listen this is what God says I can give. Through the year, if you find you can give more, you can increase your giving. Or if you're feeling stressed by your giving, you can decrease it. EPC is easy. <laughs> Very easy here. We just want to challenge one another in our stewardship because the more we give to the church, the more blessed the church will be and the more blessed you will be. That flowing thing, right? You'll keep the church blessed and you'll be blessed. The one tough thing to say, and you might say, no, Pastor, this has all been tough to hear. <laughs> Let's just not give God our leftovers. Sometimes I'm in churches, and, and that's what I hear from people. It's like, this is what I have at the end of the month. Or this is what came in at the end of the year, and this is what I can give. I worry about leftovers. We don't have a leftover God. He laid it out in the good book that if we give to him first, Everything else in our lives will fall into order. It's about giving the first fruits of the season. That's what he's saying. The first fruits. Not those nasty last fruits. I've known members who couldn't make ends meet, but when they decided to be faithful and give to the Lord first, their lives began working because the measure you give will be the measure you get back. It comes back upon you. That's what Jesus said. And I trust Jesus today, and I'm going to trust him tomorrow because he tells me the measure I give will be the measure I get back. I think he knows. <laughs> 
One last giving story. Dorothy Day, co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, devoted herself to the daily practice of feeding the hungry, visiting prisoners, clothing the naked, caring for the sick. One day, a wealthy woman stopped into the Catholic Worker office to see what's going on in this place and was so moved by the community's witness that she took off a large diamond ring and gave it to Day. Later that afternoon, Day was talking with a poor single mother who lived nearby in a tenement house. Day remembered the beautiful ring in her pocket, pulled it out, and slipped it onto the woman's finger. It was a shockingly extravagant act. The ring could have been sold and the money invested for the agency. Foolish woman! But welcoming the poor woman as Christ, Day wanted to bless her with the very best she had. Not leftovers. With the very best There is no charge for anything we do here. All we do is ask for your whole life. At this time, I invite two ushers forward to each hold a basket for you to come forward and we'll have a third usher who goes up to the choir As we sing this next hymn printed in the bulletin, you are invited to come forward and place your pledge card in a basket and return to your seat. And uh, you'd be able to you know, come up this way and then go back, staying in the flow, right? Making a circle back to your seat. If you bring your bulletin, you might be able to sing and walk. <laughs> there are extra pledge cards available. If you've already given a pledge, please come forward anyway. You could write a note on a blank card, or if you've chosen not to give at this time, maybe write a short prayer on it. Randy?
invite you to put your bulletin down. And when and where you can, how about reach out for a hand? Maybe we can hold hands together for this prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, eternal source of all good gifts, you call us your church to share all that we have and all that we are with one another and the world. We also know that you are more concerned with how we give than how much. May we be cheerful and celebrate these pledges we have made on your behalf that they may bring your realm into being in the broken places here and beyond. Bless them and multiply them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the generosity of this congregation. They've received so much and then gone and done likewise through their giving, impacting and even changing the lives of others. May you deeply, deeply bless EPC today in whatever ways you wish. Help the church to move forward with trust in your abundant provision and care. Keep them mindful of the flow of blessing so that EPC will always prosper. Please remember and deeply bless our eight new members who we are thrilled to call our own. Remember and deeply bless Barb, Dolores, Richard Jr., John E., Bob E., Hilton, Cindy, Deb, Bob S., Roger Jr., Ken S., Chuck W., Rob and family, as well as the Middle East, Ukraine, and the United States. We pray all these things and more through our Jesus, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us be faithful stewards of the time talent, and money that God has provided. Let us receive his offering.
please join me in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Loving God, you have given us life and freedom. Everything we have and everything that we are is a gift from you. You call us to be stewards of this gift. As caretakers of all that you have provided, we give back now. We dedicate these gifts to you. Bless these tithes and offerings. Help us to always use your gifts wisely. Lead us as we share them generously with others. Help our faithful stewardship to show Christ to others. We pray these things in the name of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with so much kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen.